What's up guys, Josh here from Blender Bros. And in this video, we're gonna talk about topology and shading here in Blender. It's a very simple topic, but a lot of people don't understand it. So without further ado, let's hop right here into Blender and discuss it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to delete the bottom set of vertices from this cube, and I'm just gonna have a plane right here basically, okay? Let me just move this plane to the bottom here so it's easier. Now, this is a uh, this is obviously a quad. This is a four-sided polygon. Now, what I'm gonna do here is collapse these two vertices onto each other. I'm gonna press the M key, go to at center, and now what we're gonna have here is a triangle. Now, when you have a triangle, this is very important. You cannot physically bend a triangle. No matter which direction I move these vertices, whether it's up or down, left, or right, or the, even the edges here, it does not matter which direction I actually move these vertices. This is always going to be a flat polygon. You can see this triangle, it's always flat. No matter which way I move these vertices, it is always a flat surface. It's pretty intuitive, you can see that. Now, this is very important because triangles, you can never bend them. But with n-gons and quads, you can bend them. And let me show you what I mean here. I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna add in a plane, and what I'm gonna do here with this plane is I'm just going to move even one of these vertices here. Now, when I move one of these vertices, what is happening is it's bending the quad. And you can see that by going into object mode, we have this very visible shading error right here. That is because the surface is no longer flat. We have effectively bent the quad here. Now, the same is gonna happen if we have an n-gon. I'm gonna add in an n-gon, so I'll just introduce an extra vertex here. I'll move this over. So right now it's flat, so there's no issues, but the moment I bend even one of these vertices where it's no longer flat, we have yet again another very visible shading error. So, you know, I can move these all around and you're gonna see we have a, a very obvious shading problem right here. Now, the reason I bring this up is because this is effectively what is happening in your own Blender projects when you have shading errors like this. So, what I'm gonna do here is introduce a cylinder. This is, you know, one of the most simplest 3D models out there. Now, you can see the cylinder is made up of an n-gon on the top, an n-gon on the bottom, and quads on the side. There's no triangles here. So, you know, with this, uh, what I just showed you in mind, if I were to go in here and I were to slightly bend, you know, one of these vertices here on this n-gon, so not only is the n-gon here on the top bent, we've also, you know, bent this quad here on the side. You're gonna see, right, we get a very, I'm gonna shade this auto smooth. You're gonna see we get a very visible, maybe move this up a bit. We get a very visible shading error up here and also a very visible shading error here on the side. Now, the easiest way to fix this, the easiest way to mitigate this would be to have perfect topology, you know, uh, clean shading, you know, a sub-D workflow that would naturally have clean shading. But with a hard surface modeling workflow, what I always recommend doing is I recommend isolating the shading instead. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click to shade auto smooth. And once I do that, Let's say I went in here and I introduced a loop and I moved this up. Now, if I were to bend this vertex right here, the shading can only be, you know, messed up up to this point, right? Because this is the only area that is actually bent. This area down here is not bent. So that's why the shading is kind of isolated up here on the top. Now, on a more practical level, maybe what I'll do is I'll go in here, I'll introduce a boolean cut all right we'll go in here we'll add in a boolean just like that and you're going to see naturally if i go into mat cap you can see the shading here and go to this one is kind of extended all the way to the bottom now what i can actually do to fix this is i can go in i can press Control r to add in a loop cut and i can instead isolate the shading up to this point here right so you're going to see this area is flat and now this area up here is bent. So if I apply that Boolean, you're going to see this is the only area that is technically bent by the Boolean. So what I always recommend doing is I always recommend isolating the shading. I don't recommend trying to retopologize or get crazy. With a hard surface modeling workflow, assuming you don't need 
clean topology for your pipeline, I always recommend doing something like this, where you basically isolate the shading. This is good for uh, game assets, this is good for rendering, this is good for all sorts of different situations. 3D printing, where um, I guess 3D printing wouldn't matter because uh, the shading doesn't matter, but you get the idea. This is how I would recommend isolating the shading. Now, there's all sorts of other techniques you can use. You can use like a normal transfer, you could retopologize, you could use like quad remesher. Uh, you could do what I did here. It doesn't really matter the workflow, but you know, when you're doing hard surface modeling, I personally think using this strategy right here is a lot easier because you're not really, you know, spending that much time. You're just going in, you're isolating the shading, and then you're good to go. So this is a very basic explanation of how topology and shading works in a hard surface modeling workflow. I don't want to go any deeper than this because it can get pretty complex with all the technical stuff. However, if you want to learn our full workflow and I'll explain, you know, everything, I'll go a lot deeper into topology, into shading, into all that type of stuff. Check out our hard surface accelerator program in the link below. We have had literally thousands of students complete this program in about a week or two. You can do the same thing. And again, this is going to teach you our entire hard surface modeling workflow in under two weeks, even if you're a complete beginner with no prior experience. So again, I'll link that program in the description below. And this is just a basic overview of how topology and shading works here in Blender. Hopefully this was useful and I'll see you in the next video.